Ooh, ooh, ah, oh, oh, okay. Be careful there. All right, almost there. Oh, oh, hey. What's happening, everyone? My name is Speed Streak, and welcome to Speed Streak Reviews, where we take a look at video games, movies, TV shows, comic books, and anything geek related, and see how well they turn out. Now, ever since the early 90s, Sega has given us not only one of the greatest video game series of all time, but as well as one of the best and most iconic video game characters ever. Sonic the Hedgehog. After surviving the video game crash of the early 1980s, Sega's rival Nintendo eventually became the number one video game company which actually helped save the video game industry with the help of Super Mario. But during the late 80s and early 90s, Sega slowly rose to face Nintendo as they partake in the most infamous console wars as they pit Nintendo's 16-bit Super Nintendo console with Sega's 16-bit Sega Mega Drive, aka the Sega Genesis. Even though the Genesis has many fantastic and unique games, Sega discovered that their current mascot at the time, Alex Kidd, didn't seem to be much of a rival toward Mario. So they decided to find a new mascot as well as a new video game to show the power of the Sega Genesis and its blast processing system. While Sega was trying to make a mascot to rival Mario, they went through many different designs, including a wolf, a bulldog, a rabbit, an armadillo, and eventually, they finally chose two designs which became the beloved hero and villain we all know today. One design was based off of the former president Teddy Roosevelt, who eventually became Dr. Ivo Robotnik, aka Dr. Eggman. And the other design was a hedgehog originally named Mr. Needlemouse, created by Naoto Oshima, who eventually solidified the design and gave us Sega's newest mascot, Sonic the Hedgehog. Sega then brought forth Yuji Naka and Hirokazu Yasuhara to help Naoto design and create the new game, and together they became Sonic Team. As they were developing, Sega of America came in and helped change some sections from the original concept and story for Sonic to appeal to both to Japan and to America. Soon after, Sonic the Hedgehog was born and was released to the public on June 23, 1991. And with that, Sega released one of the best quotes of the video game industry to show the power of the Sega Genesis. Genesis does what Nintendo don't. Not only did Sonic become an immense success, but he rose to be one of the most well-known video game heroes of all time and changed the video game industry forever. Not only did he become a huge phenomenon with sequels and a fantastic video game series, but he also over time gained new friends and new enemies, appeared in and had multiple comic series, many TV shows, the first video game character to have a float in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, and most recently, his first successful video game movie adaption. Even though Sonic has some missteps across his video games, he is still beloved and unstoppable, and it looks as if nothing is stopping him anytime soon. And it's all thanks to his first adventure in the Sega Genesis. Even after 30 years, does the first Sonic the Hedgehog video game still blow the world away with its own uniqueness, coolness, and speed? Well, let's race back to the early 90s as we celebrate its 30th anniversary. Let's look at the game which started it all and my Sonic the Hedgehog 1991 review. Let's start off with the story. Being the origins of Sonic's many adventures, he begins as he travels to South Island, an island which contains the mystical Chaos Emeralds, jewels which have the power to create or destroy. But arriving there, he discovers the evil Dr. Ivo Robotnik, who is roboticizing the animals, destroying the island, and building his facilities and factories to find the Chaos Emeralds first to rule the world. Now it's up to Sonic to use his super speed to not only find the Chaos Emeralds, but to stop Robotnik from roboticizing everything and conquering the world. To be honest, for being the premise for the first game in the Sega Genesis, it's amazing as one of the best origins for a video game character, which is perfect and his origins fit par for the Sega Genesis name, being well, the meaning beginning. Even though the story is simple, especially during the 16-bit era, and not only is it original, but it also has a subtle symbol of nature versus technology. And even though the American and Japanese premises are a bit different from each other, 
the story is still amazing as the introduction of the fastest thing alive to the world. Next up, the characters. To be honest, I don't think the world would be the same without the titular Hedgehog and his maniacal villain. First off, we have Sonic the Hedgehog, a blue hedgehog born with incredible speed, a love for nature, and a sense of justice who used his supersonic speed and rolling spin dash to destroy Batniks. What's interesting is that he is the first video game character to have expression. For example, if you let him stand still for a time, he grows impatient, taps his foot, and look at his watch, telling you to hurry up, we don't have time, we have Batniks to destroy and animals to save. Even so, he still has a go-on attitude to fight evil. And we have Dr. Ivo Robot aka Dr. Eggman, the main antagonist of the game as well as the entire series. He is determined to not only destroy everything and build his factories to create his robotic empire, to roboticize animals to become his badnik robots to assist him, but to also find the Chaos Emeralds to achieve ultimate power to rule the world. To be honest, both characters are not only designed very well, but also written very well for the first game and this is why they have become so memorable. Sonic's love for the environment contrasts to Robotnik's goals to pollute and mechanize slash roboticize everything, which makes a great conflict for the game. And with that, the characters leave a very great first impression. Next up, the gameplay. When Sega was in the early stages of developing Sonic the Hedgehog, they wanted to make the gameplay simple as possible as to let the player use the gamepad while using one button to jump in contrast to the Super Mario Brothers game at the time, which players used two buttons, one to run and one to jump. And not only that, but as they were calculating the speed, they actually made it too fast and which made some of the employees sick. Eventually, they were able to get the right amount of speed for the game. And as you can play the game, you can definitely feel Sonic's speed as he races across each level. And as you press down, you can roll into a ball to destroy badniks and save the animals within them. Not only that, but you also need to collect rings in order to maintain your life. But if you get hit, not only will you lose rings, but you will die if you don't have any rings, so as you're playing, be sure to have some rings left over. And if you collect 50 rings or over, you'll be able to enter the special zone at the end of the first two acts of each level. And if you get 100 rings, you'll be able to gain an extra life. Also, there are power-ups within each level which give Sonic a different ability including Power Shoes which make Sonic go faster for a short time, an Invincibility Shield which protects Sonic for a short time, a Temporary Shield which can protect Sonic from getting hit once without losing any rings, and there are also Power Ups which contain 10 rings which give you a boost in case you want to go to the Special Zone or gain extra life. And of course, and there's also the extra life power up which are also scattered in each level. And with that, the gameplay and speed shows the power of the Sega Genesis and its blast processing system. The Levels Before Sonic, the programming in video games mostly consists of blocks and the level design didn't really have that many smooth maps to make loops and rolling sections. But during the development of Sonic, Yuji Naka worked on the programming to make sure the maps run more smoothly and be not as blocky as to helps show off Sonic's speed as he runs across each level and spins through loops, tunnels, and half pipes, almost like a roller coaster. Each of the levels are very well designed, with the most iconic being Green Hill Zone, as well as the other zones including Marble Zone, Spring Yard Zone, Labyrinth Zone, Starlight Zone, and Scrap Brain Zone. Not only that, but each level varies in difficulty and badniks and have power-ups besides rings which help Sonic throughout his journey. Also at the end of each level, after Sonic beats Robotnik, he opens up a capsule which contains animals with whom Robotnik has captured and planned to roboticize, ending that level before entering the next one. During the special zone levels, if you are able to get 50 rings before the end of the first two acts of each level, you'll be able to enter through a giant ring at the end of the goal. The special zones are also uniquely designed from each other, with all of them consistently rotating in which the player has to use in order to find and collect the Chaos Emerald. You can also use the sides of the special zone to either rotate clockwise, counterclockwise, or make it faster or slower. Unfortunately, there are exits which you can accidentally go into 
and kick you out of the special zone before you get a chance to get the Chaos Emerald, but you can always try again. Other than that, the levels and their unique design not only separate Sonic from other games at the time, but help introduce the world to the blue blur. Finally, the music. For the music, Sega brought in Masato Nakamura, who was in fact the co-founder of the pop sensation band Dreams Come True. In an interview, he stated that he didn't treat Sonic like a video game, but more like a movie, which, if you think about it, sounds really cool. As you go through each level, you can listen to the different songs which fit very well for each level. For example, Green Hill Zone sounds very welcoming, Marble Zone has a cautious style with the lava, Spring Yard Zone sounds very upbeat and urban, Labyrinth Zone has an ancient underwater tone, Starlight Zone has more of a beautiful night stroll sound, and Scrap Brain Zone is the ultimate final level song being dark and dangerous. Even the special zone sounds very otherworldly as if you're in another dimension, in which you are. The boss music itself is also a great introduction to us as Sonic faces Robotnik at the end of each level, especially with the final boss as the music amps up to determine the fate of South Island and the world as well. With that, the music is especially one of the best parts of the game. Sonic the Hedgehog's first view game not only left a way past cool first impression, but brought forth one of the greatest view game franchises of all time. The story was not only simple, but it's also very well written for the first 16-bit Sonic adventure. The characters are very memorable with Sonic's go-on attitude and Eggman's maniacal evilness. The gameplay is very unique with Sonic's speed. The levels are very creative and help change how video games looked, and the music is one of the best parts which gave each of the levels life. Sonic has not only become one of the greatest video game heroes of all time, but has become a role model for not only fans, but as well as many others to never give up to never give up your dreams, to keep moving forward no matter how difficult it gets or how many obstacles get in your way. If you haven't played it yet, go check it out! Play the beginnings of the fastest thing in life's adventures as he sets forth to be the hero he is known to be today. So that was my review of the Sega Genesis Sonic the Hedgehog game in honor of Sonic's 30th anniversary. I mean, what do you guys think? Did you enjoy the first Sonic game? What was your introduction to Sonic? And do you want to see more Sonic reviews as well as other video game reviews? Well, let me know in the comment section down below. So that's gonna be all the time I have today for this video, but don't go worry, I still have plenty of more reviews to look forward to more soon. So stay tuned for more. So thank you everybody so much for watching, if you like this video, don't forget to super smash that like button, leave a comment down below to see what you think about this video, and don't forget to share a friend if you want to, and be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell, kept updated for all the latest content. So once again, thank you everybody so much for watching, I will see you next time, Speed Streak out.